Well, hello there, Tankers of the Blitz universe. I'm Flossie, and today I will be looking at what are the four best tanks for newer players. Now, why am I not doing a top five? Well, that's pretty simple. This video format will be based on one tank from each tank type, and since there are four tank types in the game, uh, I figured it would be a good way to pick uh, one single tank uh, the tech tree vehicle, by the way, that I think is best from each of those classes. So first off, we have tank destroyers, then heavies, then mediums, then light tanks. So I will be showing one one live game in each of these tanks, as well as going briefly over their stats, uh, just so you can get an idea of why I think each one of these are good vehicles. Starting off with the tank destroyers here, we have the WZ-113 GFT. Now, I think this is the best tank destroyer for newer players, and that is because it has a combination of so many different things. If we take a look at the stats, it has good alpha damage, it has really, really good uh, pen if you are using calibrated, which I recommend. It has decent accuracy for the alpha damage it carries, it has 6 degrees of gun depression, which is okay. And overall, its armor profile is absolutely insane. It also has decent mobility, going 42 forwards and 16 in reverse, with a very, very good hull traverse rate, so people are going to really struggle to traverse you. And I just think that overall, it's just such an easy tank to do well in, because you have so many good things going for it. You also have enhanced sandbag armor, so you can get your HP up to like 2200 if you put both of them on, which is absolutely insane. And uh, not only does it have that, it also has reactive armor as well, which means you will take 20% less damage if people are shooting uh, standard or premium shells at you. So overall, this tank is absolutely fantastic. And there's not really much that's bad about it. Like, the playstyle of this tank, um, it's very easy to play, which is why basically all the tanks in the list here today are going to be tanks that I think are very easy to play as a newer player so if you are newer to the game not necessarily the lines themselves are easy to play but the tier 10 itself is easy to play um so i'm not going to be focusing on the, the tech tree like the lines themselves because uh getting to the tanks it doesn't i don't know i just don't think it's uh something worth talking about in this video but I will just be talking about the tier 10s themselves. So, like I said, the WZ, very easy to play. What you want to do in this tank is you want to play it midline to frontline with your heavy tanks. Um, that's ideal. So you want to be sticking behind your heavy tanks and using them as cover while you are dealing tons of damage to the enemy opponents. So you see here we're on Dynasty's Pearl, and um, not a bad map for this tank. You don't really need to have gun depression to to uh, play well on this map. And that's like one of the things that you kind of have to mention, have to, uh, sorry, think about is you do have six degrees gun depression, which like I said, it's not bad, but it's also not great either. So you will have to watch out when you're fighting people on like hills, hilly terrain. Um, you're gonna have to be a bit more careful because that gun depression can screw you over sometimes. So. We see that a lot of their team seems to be going heavy side as well, so I will be uh, I will be doing the same thing. Yag, bro, you can go around me. <laughs> I hope you know that, dude. You can you can go around me. Don't you don't need to be pushing me. Anyways, we're gonna get a shell into the 752, and uh, yeah, you can see nice alpha damage. Uh, it's really 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 nice. Um, it's a, I, I like 640 alpha. I think it's a good balance between having alpha damage and having a decent reload because if you have too much alpha damage, your reload is just super duper long. But if you don't have enough alpha damage, then you don't really have that scare factor that makes these tanks really, really good. So, get a, wow, a really nice 700 roll and the Yag does ammo rack the dude. Um, so that's pretty good. Both teams are down two tanks, however, so we do have to be careful of that. Uh, it's not like a steamroll game, so we'll see what we can do now. I'm going to make my way back towards mid here, where this Patton has been spotted. And, ooh, the Ho-Ree's here as well. Let's see if I can get a shell. No, the ho armor is so troll. <laughs> we don't get a shell into the ho -Ree, but that doesn't really matter to me. I'm just going to keep making my way towards this Patton here. And uh, this Bat Chat actually looks like he's kind of in a horrible spot, so we're going to get a kill shot into him. And just like that, their team is now down a tank, which is very good for us. I'm going to pop my reactive 
And uh, I'm, once I do reload, I will just push up and take the shot because I don't really care. There we go. We do finish off the Hori as well. There is a Yag on my side, which really sucks. But good thing we were able to pull forward fast enough, which was very, very good. If I didn't notice that Yag there, like sooner uh, or if I hadn't noticed him that soon I would have gotten shot and bled out like crazy so we do take a couple shots from the t57 but we do manage to hide our lower plate uh, so he just decides to shoot at someone else instead which is very good and we're still alive let's see if we can get one more shell into the yag before he does die and I do hear him shoot so I'm just gonna aim in and our yag kills him oh well <laughs> not a bad game but you can see WZ very very solid tank and I do recommend you guys grind this thing before it gets nerfed because I have a feeling Wargaming is going to nerf this thing sometime soon because of how strong it is. It has just so many good things going for it. And you can see there, with a pretty average uh, gameplay-wise game, we were still able to do just about 3,400 damage, which was like no sweat at all. That was super easy battle in this tank. Alrighty, moving along to the heavy tanks. Let me just move my camera back over here. I'm going to pull up the E5, and there are so many reasons why this tank is absolutely insane for a tech tree heavy. It has crazy good turret armor. It has amazing, like, armor in general, this thing is amazing. The only real issue with its armor is its lower plate, and the tracks, like, the sides are a little bit weak. But hull down, this thing is absolutely amazing. And pairing that with the accuracy this tank carries, it only has 2.8 seconds of aim time, which is amazing for a tier 10 heavy and it has pretty decent dpm of about 2700 with a dispersion of 0.299 so this tank is very very accurate and it has decent alpha damage as well at 400 its uh, pen is also amazing at 374 and it has eight degrees of gun depression just kind of rounding off the gun as being absolutely amazing i love this tank's gun and its mobility is pretty solid as well the only thing with the mobility that i really don't like is the reverse speed at 12 so you really have to be careful where you're positioning this tank however it's uh power to weight and hull traverse rate they're kind of average for a heavy so it's not too bad and in terms of the uh the armor like i said it's very very strong so yeah this tank also has uh, enhanced sandbag armor as well so its hp is not all that terrible uh having just about 2600 hp is pretty average for a heavy and uh yeah it's really really good so overall this tank is fantastic and um i know i said i really wouldn't mention the line too much in terms of these tanks but grinding this tank is actually not that bad either the m103 is pretty good when you get it out of its stock form uh, T32 is not bad, and yeah, overall, very, very good tank uh, to grind, and actually, I, re I would recommend, if you were to grind one of these tanks first, I would recommend getting the E5 first. Out of all the tanks I'm going to list today, uh, get the E5 first. It's absolutely amazing. And again, just like the WZ, this thing doesn't really have many downsides besides that reverse speed. You're able to pretty much just position yourself in any uh, hull down spot you'd want and people are really going to struggle to pen you now if you do have enough heat pen uh if your opponents have enough heat pen they can go through your turret cheeks and your hatch on the roof so just be careful of that you want to move this tank back and forth wiggle it around a little bit staying still in this sort of vehicle is not really ideal but again the turret armor is insane and you won't be uh you shouldn't have to worry too much about getting penned easily so, we're on Lagoon for this battle here, and I'm going to be going heavy side because I do want to support my heavies, obviously. And, uh, yeah. So, what I'm going to do is I will basically head straight for the first hull down spot I see, which is, of course, the mid here. I love playing this tank at this mid spot here because it's exceptionally good at holding. So, I will be sending that right now, and we see we have a Kron up against us, which is... That's a very, very good haul down tank right there. But overall, this thing is way more well-rounded than the Kron, so I'm not too worried about that. We can uh, pretty much butter right through tanks like this E100 as well. And you can see there, our turret armor is working quite well. I'm assuming that was the grill that just shot at us. So, yes, I'm going to keep using this rock as a bit of cover. And, yeah, right now, I'm in a very good spot. I'm going to see if I can get a shell into this Kron's turret. Unfortunately, that one misses, but that's all right. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna keep holding this. We'll see what we can do. I'm gonna see if this Kron is gonna let me get a shell into him. Maybe I can pull up here and... Come on. There we go. You can see the amazing heat pen. Even if the Kron slightly angles his turret like that, 
were then able to get a pen into him, which is very, very nice. And having lots of pen on a heavy is super important, especially one that can play hull down like this, because you're going to be fighting other tanks that are good at hull down gameplay, and uh, you're going to be able to pen them with ease, which is something that's super nice. Let's get a shell into the grill. I could have loaded HE for that grill, but I didn't really want to uh, bother, because sometimes HE, HE and grills is kind of troll, so depends. But anyways, we get a nice shot into the E100's turret, and at this point, I'm just gonna sit here and farm out this E100, because he's not the best of players, and, uh, yeah, he splashes me with HE, because obviously he can't pen me from that angle. So yeah, there we go, E100's now dead, and I do see their Kron and their 4005 are YOLOing our left side here, so I'm gonna try and get an HE into this 4005 if I can. I do actually hit the HE, I'm surprised I hit that. Uh, but he is running spall, so it doesn't really matter. However, this guy is now basically dead, so you know what? I'm gonna ignore the 4005 right there because, yeah, he's basically screwed. And I'm gonna get a shot into the Vickers for a nice max roll of 500 damage. Excellent stuff right there. And the Vickers is going to bounce my side. I don't know how he did that because the side armor is not all that great on this tank. So, yeah, basically play this thing haul down. And, um, yeah, just use your super nice accuracy to get nice shells into your opponents. And just like that, game number two is also a win. And uh, another easy, easy win in this tank. I mean, we just held heavy side and there was nothing their team could really do about me. Um, yeah, pretty good showcase of the tank. And just like the first game, we did around 33 to 3400. So yeah, very, very nice game, and I think it really demonstrates why this tank is so, so good. I definitely recommend you guys grind this tank if you don't have it yet. Now, moving on to the medium tanks. And I'm going to be a little bit biased with this because the STB, in my opinion, is the king of mediums. It has so many good things going for it, and it is my favorite tank in the entire game, which is why I say I will be a little bit biased, because of course it is also my most played tank. So, what makes this tank so good? Like all of the others on my list, this tank has more than just one thing going for it. It has decent DPM of 3100 for a medium, and uh, I am using calibrated shells because I like getting a little bit of extra pen. And the aim time and dispersion are also fairly decent. So this tank is pretty accurate for the most part. It can be a little bit troll sometimes, as Wargaming did nerf the accuracy on it a while ago. But uh, I don't mind it personally. In terms of the damage, this tank has decent alpha damage at 330 and at 320 on the premium. So you can see there, another good thing about this tank is the damage loss from shooting premium shells is only 10. You only lose 10 damage when you're shooting this tank with premium. And it's uh, HE Alpha at 380 is also pretty good. Another extremely good thing about this tank is its gun depression. It has 11 degrees, which is the most for a tier 10 medium in the entire game. And actually the most gun depression for a tier 10 period. It's very, very nice. And it means this tank is extremely flexible. Flexibility on a medium is super important. And it makes it really easy to play once you get the gameplay style of playing haul down down. Then it's super easy. In terms of the tank's mobility, it has a very, very nice mobility for a medium. Uh, I mean, it's pretty average, honestly, but I, I like it a lot. So, especially the reverse speed. It goes 20 in reverse, which is very nice. And its top speed of 53, it's kind of average for a medium, which is good. And its traverse rate, it has very, very good haul traverse. And power to weight is fairly decent as well. So, yeah, overall, the tank's stats are very, very nice. And, uh, yeah, it's pen because it has double AP, so it has AP standard shells and AP premium. Its pen is going to be very, very good, uh, higher than the numbers it actually shows in-game because the tank has shell normalization due to its AP shells. So, yeah, STB, fantastic tank. Uh, its armor profile is also very, very good, but you do want to make sure you're playing this thing haul down only. Uh, if you are on flat ground with this tank, you're going to struggle because its hull kind of sucks, I'm not going to lie. Uh, even the upper plate is pretty bad. But when you are hull down, this thing is very, very difficult to deal with. And its, uh, its hatch, even though it's quite large, when you move the tank back and forth, especially when, when you have such good mobility, especially going 20 in reverse, uh, yeah, the hatch is very, very difficult to hit. And so you really only have to worry about that. And if you're up against tanks that have a lot of pen, they can sometimes go through your cheeks. But again, armor profile is pretty decent for a medium, and it's a very well-rounded medium, which is what you want. You want something that can be flexible in most situations. 
and having a good pen, good mo mobility, good armor, it's all just fantastic. And you can see here, 11 degrees of gun depression is absolutely insane. Like, we were able to just work that ridge and get a free shell into the Leopard when he wasn't even paying attention. And we're going to get another shell into this bat chat here. But you can see the hull is quite weak, so he was able to pan us back. However, we're going to get another shell into the Leopard. And just like that, we are... Um, we have positively traded, so that's good. We've only taken one shell, and we've gotten three into the enemies. Now I'm going to blind fire that bush because I'm not sure if the Leopard is sitting there unspotted. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do next. So that bat chat is still sitting there, actually. And now he is a one-shot, so I am not worried about him anymore. And their leopard is also not doing too great. And unfortunately, he is able to see my hull. So you can see this is a bit of an awkward situation here. We are showing our hull because that's really the only way we're able to pen these guys. And we're kind of taking shots for it. So we'll see if this leopard is going to poke me again. But... With our uh, T-54 being pretty much full health, um, yeah, we should be fine. We should be fine. Now, it looks like the Leopard actually did run away. So since I am unspotted, I will move up more. And uh, you can see the gun depression again. The Leopard does actually hit that, though, which is kind of impressive. But he should be... Uh, oh, well, I guess he's not going to die to our T-54. Because our T-54 is going to get yagged. <laughs> That's very fun, huh? Anyways, now we are in a little bit of a pickle. This leopard is going to uh, maybe be able to see my lower plate, but he does miss. So I'm going to try and get a shell in, but I don't aim that very well. So we do actually miss him. However, ah, rip. These shells are not going where I want them to. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. We do get a shell into the leopard, and uh, we should be able to finish him off now if he does push me again. So we'll see if he does. Is he going to poke me? Let's see. Let's see. And I feel like that Yag probably moved up as well, so I'm going to have to be careful of him. But, hmm. It also looks like, for the most part, my team is just playing way too passive on, uh, on their side of the map. I do get the kill into the Leopard, which is very, very good for me, and it means that I am actually unspotted. Uh, or I can get unspotted now, which is the main thing I'm trying to do. Let's see if I can actually cross here without dying, and we were lucky that the Yag missed us. I believe it was the Yag that did shoot at me, so I'm going to retreat because, of course, in a medium tank, you don't want to be... Uh, once you're at low health, you, you don't want to be playing aggressive anymore because it's very easy for you to get picked off by tanks like that type. So I'm going to make my way back towards this rear bush here, and I will just see... Um, I'll see if I can spot him up before he actually is able to get towards me, so we'll see. I'm going to see where that type gets spotted. That's basically who I'm worried about right now, but uh, at the end of the day, I'm not too, too worried because I do have a lot of more view range than he does, so I will be able to outspot him depending on where he goes, which is another good thing about playing a medium. Um, mediums just have better view range than heavies obviously so that means that if you are in a situation like this you can comfortably sit further back and you won't have to worry about getting spotted by them first so yeah again i'm playing super passive there's nothing i really can do right now since i did lose a bunch of health to that uh, leopard but it is what it is at the end of the day so let's just wait for this type to make a move i'm still assuming that he went heavy or medium side sorry and, uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna wait for him now. And there he is. Did get spotted. And he's not really paying attention to me, so I will get one shell in. I'm expecting to get spotted from that, because I did shoot. And now he is aware of where I am, which is okay, but, uh, I'm gonna have to be very careful. So, because of the nice gun depression I'm carrying, I can actually work a spot like this. So, if he does end up just pushing for me, uh, I can probably get another shell into him before he is able to. But... Seeing as he looked like he was still facing the other direction, I feel like he'd pull off to this side instead. Not exactly sure, honestly. He could go either way. So what I'm going to do... Oh, there he is. He's actually backing up for whatever reason. So he basically gives us another free shell into his side there, which is quite good for us. And let's see if I can kill him. No, unfortunately, I wasn't able to hit his little cheek weak spot there. But that is okay, and I'm going to get unspotted before I actually poke him again. There we go, we should be unspotted, because he got unspotted. And there we go, you can see the nice accuracy on this tank working wonders. And we did, in fact, get the kill on the type there, bringing us, again, up to about 3,300 damage. It seems like I'm averaging pretty good damage in all of these tanks, 
which should be the case because I'm calling them really strong and fairly easy to play. So obviously medium tanks I would not recommend in general for newer players, but if you were to pick a medium tank to go for, this tank is definitely the one I'd recommend because of how flexible it is on pretty much every map. There's not really a map that you can't do well in it on this uh, with this vehicle. So there you go. That was a bit more of a challenging game because I did bleed a lot of health to that leopard. But in the end, it didn't really matter. And we were able to out-trade uh, our type there because he wasn't able to spot us. So that's great. We did okay. We did 3,362 damage. So not bad. Next up, and finally, we are at the last tank for today's video, the Sheridan. Now, personally for me, I think this is by far the easiest light tank in the entire game to play, which is why I would recommend it. If you are new to light tanks and you do want to try out a tank that is very easy to play, I recommend the Sheridan. Now, why is that? Well, there's quite a few reasons. And first off, the gun. It deals 560 damage on its standard shells and 490 on the premium, as well as 680 on the HE. So yes, the alpha damage is what makes this tank so strong. And the reason for that is because you can poke, shoot once, deal a ton of damage to other mediums or lights, and then back into cover. And what are they supposed to do? Most mediums and lights cannot out-trade you whatsoever, and that is why the Sheridan is so strong. You poke once, out-trade your opponents, and back into cover. Like, that's it. That's the gameplay style of this tank. It is very, very simple to get the hang of in terms of a light tank. As well as the gun depression is 10 degrees, so this tank is very, very flexible on all terrain, which is excellent. Uh, especially for a tank that has no armor. Flexibility is very, very important, and it really, really helps this tank having that good gun depression. Another thing that's really good about this tank is its penetration. It has the best penetration for any medium or light at tier 10 whatsoever. It has 341 millimeters of heat pen, uh, which is amazing premium pen for a light tank. And it means you're not really going to struggle to cut through tanks uh, that are more heavily armored like IS-7s and all that sort of stuff. I am using calibrated shells and I do recommend you guys use that as well if you are going to be playing in this tank. Because the DPM of 2400 is not good to begin with. So what are you going to do? Like why would you increase that by like what 186? That's not going to do anything. So I'd rather have the crazy good heat pen upwards of 341 instead. So yeah, that's one thing about this tank, is its DPM is not all that great. And another thing is the accuracy. The accuracy can be very, very troll at times. But for a tank with 560 alpha, especially on a light tank, I would say it's pretty accurate for what it is. For what it is. It's not accurate overall, but for what it is, I think it is accurate. And uh, I do actually find that I will hit a lot of shots in this tank. The overall mobility of this tank is also very, very nice. It goes 65 forward and 22 in reverse. So moving around the map will not be an issue for you whatsoever in this tank. And its hull traverse rate is 73, means you're going to be able to outflank a lot of opponents. Now, when playing a light tank, I will also note that all light tanks in the game have this mechanic here that means that your concealment does not decrease while you're moving. So if you're sitting still or you're moving, your concealment will stay the exact same. It's only when you're shooting that you're going to lose uh, camo value. So yeah, overall, very, very nice in terms of its gun and its mobility, in my opinion. And the armor profile of this tank is extremely troll. The whole hull is spaced armor, minus a little bar at the bottom and the bottom of the front. So the bottom of the front, uh, basically the lower plate, I'll call it, and the rear as well. There's a little bit of an area where you can get HE'd, but the rest of it's all spaced armor on the hull. Uh, so it's very, very troll, and the spaced armor is so troll, in fact, that you'll find a lot of people will just bounce you randomly. Like, even loading just normal shells, like AP, they'll just get you'll get bounces for whatever reason in this tank. And it makes it really, really stupid to go up against, because not only are you going to be getting out-traded, you're then going to have to hope that your shell actually pens and RNG doesn't screw you over. So yeah, Sheridan, very, very, very good tank. And I think it's the best light tank for newer light tank players because of how forgiving it is. Uh, yes, you don't have armor, and if you do play too aggressive, you will get nuked, but that's the same in every single light tank. Light tanks in general are not very good for newer players, but if you are wanting to try one out, this is where you should start because it just has... Uh, it just It's so easy to play compared to the other light tanks. Like You don't really have to put much thought into what you're going to be doing. So we'll see if we can showcase that today's in today's uh, battle here. 
So, I am, of course, on Desert Sands here, and I just want to check something. But yeah, we're up against a Leopard 1, who is going to be YOLOing, and you can see right there, we weren't spotted. We used the bush to keep unspotted while that Leopard YOLOed, and we were able to get a 560 slap into his side there. And what is he supposed to do? That's it. He just took a ton of damage, and didn't. we didn't even get any in return. So that's just what the Sheridan's so good at doing, is dealing tons of damage in a single shot, and then not taking much in return. So let's see if I can get another shell into this leopard and oh my god, 623. You can see what I mean, the accuracy is fine, like I don't know why, sometimes this tank just hits really stupid shells, like that should not have hit if, if this was any other like 560 alpha gun. But because it's the Sheridan, of course that one had to hit, so that was excellent for us, and it means the leopard is now a one shot and he does miss his shell, meaning that we're able to aim in for a little bit and then pick up the clear, and all that's left is this TBP who is very very screwed right now. We're gonna load our HE because of the nice HE alpha this tank has, and we're gonna slap him for oh my gosh a max roll of 850 what other light tank can do that in a single shot oh wait none <laughs> that's what makes this tank so so good and again i think this tank is better for newer players than the bat chat because it's more flexible the bat chat has no gun depression and you have to sit in the open for a while while you're dumping your clip to actually get the full damage out whereas this tank you just peek quickly do, do 560 alpha and back into cover like it's just so so easy to play and if you're flanking around the map properly like a light tank player should you're going to be a complete and utter nuisance for the enemy team to deal with which is what you want to do so again like i said you want to be staying on the move in this tank flanking your opponents as much as you can so you can see i'm flanking into their spawn and we'll see if i can spot up this yag here and get a shell into a superstructure you just want to make sure you aim in all the way so you can get the max amount of accuracy possible and you can see a nice 546 roll into the yag there uh, and he's not too happy. He's going to turn around and he won't be able to see us. So I'm not too worried about him turning around to begin with. We also see the grill YOLOing off to the side. And unfortunately, that was a little bit of a miss aim from me. But it's okay. And you can see the YAG is going to be, uh, yeah. I mean, he's going to be turning back for me uh, whenever I get spotted because he's probably going to want to get me out of the game. But I won't let that happen. I'll move to a new position and see if I can get a shell into this grill here. We're going to load an HE, and that's a nice 647 roll right into that grill. However, our team is not doing all that well. But I will see if I can, in fact, get a shell into this 268 if he does back up. Come on, bro. Stay there. There we go. Nice alpha damage just killing off that 268 in one single shot. Again, this is why this tank is so very good. Because of that single shot damage, it's very, very nice end game to be clearing tanks with your high alpha. So, now that that guy's dead, all we have to deal with now is that grill still. So I'm going to try and get another shell into him. Again, the accuracy on this tank is fine for what it is, man. Like, I, I don't really see too much issue with the accuracy on this tank. Even though it says it has a long aim time, sometimes you don't even need to aim in all the way to get your full uh, effect. But yeah, so the grill's now a one-shot. This is technically winnable, but I do need to be really careful because that Yag can absolutely nuke me. So I'm going to play very carefully. Uh, I somehow tracked myself on that dune. But basically, in the Sheridan, you want to basically uh, isolate your opponents one by one. That's the best way of uh, describing end game a light gameplay, is you want to use your view range to your advantage. Because you're in a light tank, you're going to be able to outspot your opponents for the most part. And uh, you can see there, we outspotted that IS-8, and we did not get spotted in return. But the IS-8 is not really what I'm worried about right now. I'm worried about that grill, because he is a one-shot. I'm going to try and get him out of the game as soon as I can. So I am going to ignore this IS-8 IS here, and you know, actually, you know what, no, he's by himself. I'm not going to ignore the IS-8. We do get a really nice shot on the move into that guy, at dealing a nice fire damage, and as well, ooh, Yag missed me, which is very, very good. is is going to miss as well. Wow, okay. There we go. We do low roll for 488, but I'm not too worried about that. Let's get over the ridge before the Yag can actually shoot me. And uh, you know what? I'm just going to play like an annoying little roach. So I'm going to basically try and get the kill on this IS-8. And I do need to get towards base cap as soon as I can. So you know what? We're going to maybe take a shell from this Yag in return. But I'm not too worried about that. I really just need to get towards this base cap as soon as I can here. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate. I don't think I will have enough time. Yeah, I kind of played that a little bit sad there. I should have gone towards base cap sooner than I did. But that's on me. I could have won this game quite easily if I had just done that. But oh well. 
you can see there, even with me playing a little bit sus at the end, I could have technically won that game pretty easily by just going for base cap. We were still able to do 6,400 damage, which is just absolutely insane. And all I did was shoot and back up. That's it. I just made sure I was unspotted and I was able to get so much damage out there using the tank's good alpha damage. So yeah, unfortunately it wasn't a win because again, I could have played that better at the end. But it was a little bit of a panic situation, and uh, yeah, that Yag kind of scared me. But anyways, very, very good showcase of the Sheridan, and why I think it's a very, very good tank for newer players to pick up if you're trying to get into lights. Again, light tanks are not good for newer players in general, but if you were to pick one up, the Sheridan is what I would recommend. So yeah, overall, get the E5 out of all of these tanks first, because it's e the easiest to play overall. Um, but all of these tanks are the best in their class, in my opinion, uh, in terms of being easiest to play. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and hopefully I helped you get uh, recommendations for what I think you should start grinding if you haven't already. And with that, for any of you out there who are not yet subscribed to my channel, I highly recommend you do so, as it's a fantastic way to support the content I produce and make, as well as stay up to date when I post almost daily. And with that, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.